Hi everyone, my name is Ming Kai. Today I'm going to talk about our journey on building an ML platform at Uber in the past several years. As you may already know, Uber is a mobility as well as a delivery company that bridge both virtual and physical world. There are lots of real-time and complex ML decisions to be made for business critical use cases. As our CEO has said, Uber is a giant machine intelligence problem given the data and uncertainty of the real world. The ML use cases at Uber are pretty diversified, ranging from tablet data problem to computer vision and NLP problems. For example, we use the machine learning models to predict map ETA and optimize for driver pricing. We use ML models in each search and discovery as well as product recommendations. We also use ML models for detecting masks as well during the pandemic. The ML development and production lifecycle is pretty involved from problem definition to feature engineering to model training, evaluation, deployment, and monitoring. It also requires different roles like data engineers, applied scientists, ML engineer, and backend engineer to collaborate and iterate on the models before serving traffic in production. An end-to-end -end ML platform like Macangela is very important for this complex ML lifecycle workflow. In addition, ML models require vast and complex ecosystem to support the production use cases. This diagram from Google's paper on hidden technical debit in ML systems, as we can see, the ML code and algorithms are a small portion of the whole puzzle. There are lots of surrounding components to support the complex ML-based system. The examples including feature extraction, uh, data verification, machine resource management, serving infrastructure, so on and so forth. Uber started our investment in ML platform back in 2016 with Macangela, which is one of the early ML platforms similar to FB Learners. We also open sourced Horrorworld, which is one of the early distributed deep learning training framework for both TensorFlow as well as PyTorch. We also invest in feature store called Pilot, which is one of the early gen general purpose feature store support point in time feature queries, as well as 10 million QPS for feature joins in real time prediction. Additionally, we have also invested in model serving, model metadata management, and end to end workflow orchestrations as well. In the past, Few years, there are quite a lot of challenges, especially the ML landscape in Uber has changed significantly. As this diagram here shows ranking of 137 projects by the average QPS in a month. This follows a zip phone distribution or power distribution. Historically, Macanella has been focused on the long tail and ease of use. Recently, we have shift our focus from ML everywhere to high impact use cases like ETA, each search and discovery, uh, incentive allocation, so on and so forth. In additionally, when Uber started in 2016, lots of deep learning use cases are more focused on our self driving car units. Since 2000, we have been making a big push and investment on deep learning, improving the deep learning developer productivity and pushing the adoption of deep learning models across the company. Now we have migrated most of our tier one models to deep learning models. As we first started ML platform back in 2016, we have two completely different tech stack for deep learning and for classic ML. For classic ML, which are mostly use XGBoost tree models, we have a purely UI driven solution, which is the first version of Macangela. However, there are some limitations of this approach, like there are no code reviews or versioning. Then for deep learning, the majority of use cases are for our self-driving car teams. We only have very limited support like Jupyter Notebook templates and the deep learning containers. 
Since 2020, we have a project called Canvas to support deep learning as a first-class citizen in our ML platform. This has significantly improved the developer productivity for deep learning users. Hence, we have improved the deep learning adoptions at Uber. However, it's purely code-driven and still have completely separate stack compared to our classic ML. Since last year, we have reacted our ML platform to have a unified UI and code experience for both classic ML as well as deep learning developers. Now users can choose either UI or code depends on which they prefer and also which model they are using. We will auto-generate code diffs if the user is choosing UI to iterate their models. And all code and configuration change, configuration change reviewed and versioned in ML monorepo for beta knowledge sharing across Uber. Project Canvas is a code-driven developer experience that makes ML development as convenient as and as disciplined as microservice. For a long time, machine learning at Uber is UI-driven. While this works for simple ML algorithms, it doesn't work for deep learning because deep learning involves lots of coding to de describe the model as well as training process. And so the deep learning is more similar to software engineering. Instead of by mature software developer ecosystem, a Canvas applies software engineering principles and best practice to our machine learning domain as well. In Canvas, all the source of truth are stored in our ML monorepo. This includes our ML application framework, developer test tools, user code, as well as shared models and the libraries. By storing user applications on the same repo, we enabled and change tracking, code reviews, and most importantly, allow experts at Uber to develop reusable models and make sweeping change across the company. Our application framework abstracts our nitty-gritty details of components in different stages, and the user applications just need to provide dependencies, training configurations, and models. The users will run the application on laptop or some, some sample code and for debugging and testing. Once they are happy with that, they will submit to a remote cluster to training on the full data set size. And then if the model works, they will deploy for serving and also deploy for uh, production retrains. And then they can and also enable the production monitoring. So the whole, like after they are happy with the full model production iteration, they will move to the next version of the model. So the one important component in Canvas is we call the application framework. So this is inspired by service for application framework for microservices. In Uber, we have lots of infrastructure components like our in-house compute, schedulers, storage, and data lakes. For our, we have a layer called UberFX, which is which hides the details of Uber infra services like RPCs, monitoring, like M3, and logging. Similarly, in Macangelo, we apply the same concept. I introduced the application framework called MF to hide all the details of Macangelo, like the workflow system, the Spark data processing engine, like the whole world distributed training training framework, and the user only need to build their ML applications like similar to writing microservices by de declaratively defining the YAML configurations. This is an example of YAML configurations we have here for uh, Canvas. As we can see, we have very detailed step for different stage like feature preparations, transformation, trainers, and evaluations. And in feature prep, a user can specify what kind of data source they're going to use and which Python modules they're going to use for this data source. 
This example shows a Hive data source example, and similarly for transformation and trainer. And for deep learning trainer, actually we allow users to hook up their customer code, like a Python model definition here. So that enables both a decorative training pipeline definition as well as customization on top of that. In compared to Canvas, we have also introduced a unified UI system called MS Studio. Uh, the idea for Canvas is it's the engine behind the scenes for everyone who is comfortable using code. But we still have a cohort of lots of users. They are very UI driven and they're happy with our ease of use, mechanical UIs. So for those, those users, we introduce a system called MS Studio, which bridges the gap between code-driven as well as, well as UI-driven model development. They can create and manage pipelines in the UI, and also we will send auto-generate the diffs for code reviews. And also the, we will have rich data visualizations for both Canvas users and UI users as well. So this Diagram shows an uh, example of the tools we have before MS Studio. As we can see here, in the different phases of the life cycle of ML development, Uber actually, in the past many years, has developed lots of fragment tools. For example, we have Data Science Workbench for Jupyter Notebook, Phototyping, and Iteration. And we have ML Explorer for people to orchestrate their ML work, uh, workflows. And also we have MA Mechanical UI, which is a web-based UI that supports all the tree-based model iterations. Then we have monitoring UI, so on and so forth. It's pretty fragmented, as we can see. So with MS Studio, we actually consolidate all those UIs into a single UI component which is built on top of a unified API as well as using Canvas as the core engine. That significantly improves our development velocity and productivity at Uber. So this is actually a UI page that shows how we are managing pipelines in MS Studio UI. As you can see here, for the pipelines which land to the master, we're going to show individual revisions in the UI. And also, whenever user land a new pipeline to the master, we have a CI CD job, which is going to automatically update the unified API, as well as MS Studio, for those pipelines. And the user can click a run button on those pipelines, so they can run these pipelines and generate a model. And also, they can duplicate an existing revision and make modifications on top of that. And we will generate code reviews. Once they co go through the code reviews, they can also land to the ML code or through the UI here in MS Studio. This also shows for a given model, we have very rich visualization as well. And also we support the custom metrics. So people can define different metrics for different models and we can visualize them in the same UI. Behind the hood, the Macangela Studio is built on top of a unified API framework inspired by the Kubernetes CRD pattern. The idea of this unified API framework is to be a plug and play framework so that we can use both in-house components as well as third-party components. It provides a consistent API for the whole Macangela product suite and also it supports both UI and code-driven model iterations. As I said, it's inspired by the Kubernetes API conventions. For example, we use spec for desert state, and we use status for current state. And the entity specs are version controlled, which is matched pretty well with our Git-based source of truth. We also use custom entities and controller pattern for extensibility as well in this API framework. This slide shows one example how pipeline is managed using the unified API framework. Pipeline source of truth is 
saved in the ML code, and we have different type of pipelines. For example, like feature ETL pipeline, training pipeline, uh, evaluation pipeline, so on and so forth. For the training pipeline example, when people land their diff in the master, we have a CI/CD job going to pick up that and update the training pipeline in our MS Studio and also build the corresponding artifacts using the pipeline controller. And then they can click the run button on the pipeline, which will generate a pipeline run CRD. And the pipeline run controller will also pick up that and handle create the corresponding training jobs by executing the steps in the pipeline one by one. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about how what's our early thinkings on generative AI platform. As I have described before, my general history has been focused on tabular data and a little bit on NLP and a little bit on computer vision. But generative AI has completely disrupted a lot in the ML ops space, as we all know here. So for large language models, we actually kind of going to build a generative AI platform in Uber so that we can leverage the platform power, power platform for all the use cases on top of the generative AI platform. There are like a couple of different components in this platform. First, we're going to have a generic API gateway, which is going to hide the external vendor provide models, large language models like GPT, GPT from OpenAI, Palm models from Google, and so on and so forth. And also, we have, we're going to have, on top of that, we have different plugins to support prompt engineering and safety and the policy moderation, confidential data reaction, like PI information reaction, and also try to detect the hallucination as much as possible as well. Also, we're going to extend the mechanical platform to support fine-tune models, fine-tune pre-train, and the human in the loop reinforced learning as well. On the serving side, we're also going to support model parallelism so we can serve large language models in-house, as well as uh, support containerization to reduce the uh, model size as well. Also for evaluation, large language model is uh, need quite a lot of new investment compared to the traditional tabular data models. In summary, Macangelo has evolved significantly in the past few years, including a seamless UI and code-driven iterations with MS Studio and Canvas, supporting deep learning with decorative ML application framework, as well as concerned or fragmented ecosystem with unified API frameworks. Going forward, we're going to continue leverage based of class third party as well as in-house ML components. Also, we're going to heavily invest in large language models as well as generative AI use cases so that we can leverage the power of platform here at Uber. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate that.